What is up guys? Welcome to game two of the NPL Miners Tryout Tournament. This time we are taking on Lynx Forte and the South Florida Bulus, I believe his team name is. Uh, should be in the thumbnail as well as the, t the title so you guys can read it there. But uh, we've got a very interesting matchup this game. My opponent has uh, what looks to be a kind of scary team. There are a couple of really big threats to me on his team. Uh, he has, you'll see it come up on the right, Kartana, Mega Manectric, Dragonite, Sylveon, Gliscor, Suicune, Darmanitan, and Sableye. His Z Pokemon are Kartana and Darmanitan, make them even scarier than they already are. Uh, and there should also be a timestamp coming up on screen as well, guys, so that you can skip forward to the battle if you don't want to see the team, team builder portion of this video, which is coming up right now. Also, just before we get into it uh, fully, I just want to mention that we will be back doing lives uh, tomorrow. Uh, I have a couple of tiers, uh, tiers that I want to experiment with uh, that are new to uh, Showdown, uh, mainly... Pokebank RU, which was just recently released, and one of their metagame of the months, which is really cool. Uh, Ethan actually released a video on it. Uh, go check out his channel, Redithan. Uh, he's almost at 100 subs, guys, so definitely go check him out. He just hit 97, I believe, so it'd really mean a lot if you could go support him. He's a good friend of mine. But anyway, getting into this team builder, uh, right away, his biggest threat to me, I noticed, was Kartana. That thing outspeeds Keldeo. Uh, it pretty much bodies everything. It has super effective coverage for almost everything on my team, barring Thunderous, uh, I believe, because the two Pokemon that I left behind were uh, Flygon, which doesn't want to take a, a Leaf Blade anyway, and the other Mon I left behind was Entei. Uh, Entei it would have been able to take hits from, um... Well, it would have been able to take hits from Kartana, but I didn't really want to risk him running like all-out pummeling uh, with his, with uh, Sacred Sword, uh, Fighting him Z, and be able to knock out Entei. So I didn't want that to be my check to his Kartana. So I designed this Jirachi, physically defensive, doesn't take too much from a Night Slash. I put on HP Fire because Fire Punch may, may not cut it depending on his investment. Uh, so I decided to go with Hidden Power Fire instead. Stealth Rocks because Stealth Rocks are really important this game. U-turn for momentum and Wish was. Uh, kind of important this game. I wanted to make sure that certain things stayed healthy. Mainly Snorlax, which doesn't have a recovery as you guys will see, and Shoddy Arkeldeo, uh, because uh, it also doesn't have recovery. Uh, it's, I, my t two favorite sets uh, are here at the end. You guys are going to see them when we get to them, but this is Jirachi. It's, it's meant to, to be a cleric a little bit with, uh, with Wish uh, and gain momentum with U-Turn. Uh, we also have Volt Switch on uh, our... Uh, Thunderous, I believe. No, we don't. Sorry. Uh, this is our only form of momentum gaining is this U-turn right here, which may or may not have cost me this game. So you guys will see that in a bit. But next up, we have Clefable. This set was designed to take on his Suicune and pretty much his entire team after certain things went down. Um, his Darmanitan was the only, like, really, really big threat to this thing. Maybe Kartana if it was, like, Choice Banded with Smart Strike, but because otherwise it wouldn't be able to take me out with the Smart Strike because I have this defensive investment right here, 240. Um, with a bold nature. Moonblast, Calm Mind, Moonlight, and Thunder Wave. So basically the idea was Thunder Wave his uh, Suicune and set up alongside it. And I'm unaware, right? So he, it doesn't matter what he is unless he's Roar and he gets up to full. But we can just start Moonblasting things afterwards, knocking stuff out. And his biggest threats to uh, Clefable would have to be like uh, Iron Head, Dragonite, uh, or... Uh, I guess Scarf Darmanitan or even Life Orb Darmanitan both can do a lot of damage to this thing, but otherwise it handles all of his special attackers really, really well. Manectra can't do anything, Sableye if it's running special cannot do anything, Suicune can't do anything, and typically Sylveon cannot do anything unless it's running max uh, special attack specs. Then it can definitely punch holes in Clefable, but even at that I'm getting up Calm Mind, so that's Clefable for you. Next up we have Pandora. Uh, kindly named by Jose. I didn't mention this last time uh, because I forgot who had named my Absol, but Jose the Shiny Weaver, uh, one of our best friends, and I forgot that he named our Absol, but we've, we are bringing Absol uh, this game. We've got Flamethrower for Kartana. We do outspeed by one point uh, for a max speed Jolly set. Uh, we hit 349, I believe that thing hits 348. Uh, we do have Flamethrower Ice Beams for the uh, Gliscor and the Dragonite. As you can see, he does have two quad weaknesses to ice. Uh, Iron Tail is there for the Sylveon to make it not a switch into Absol. And my last move was actually Play Rough for Sableye, but just because I felt like a Sableye probably wasn't going to come to this game, I decided to sub it out for Sucker Punch uh, because I wanted something to hit the Manectric at least because nothing on my team actually outspeeds Manectric uh, and there was nothing I could tailor outside of a Choice Scarfer to do it, so uh, I wanted to make sure to at least have one form of priority. It could also take out a weakened Kartana. 
Uh, pretty much anything that was weakened, uh, it would be able to handle. So outside of E-Speed Dragonite, of course. So that's uh, Mega Absol right here. Then we have Raigeki, our uh, Thunderous Therian. So this was my win con this game. I was going for a max special attack, uh, almost max speed set uh, with modest. This speed at plus two allowed me to outspeed any one of his Scarfers, including Scarf Kartana. The speed also uh, allows me to outspeed max speed Dragonite. Uh, with 285, that thing hits 284. I'm able to get off an HP Ice after rocks and pretty much knock it out, so that's why that's there. Uh, Jelini and Nasty Plot, because that was easy for me to uh, to win the game if I got both up. The problem is, there are very seldom situations where I can actually get both an Agility and a Nasty Plot up against his team, and you'll see that in the battle. Uh, I have a hard time being able to bring this thing in outside of maybe switching it in on Manectrix, Thunderbolts, or Volt Switches. That's really the only time I can ever bring this thing in, so it's going to be difficult to get it in. I probably should have considered a Scarf set, but I didn't want to lock myself into an electric move and just give his Gliscor free reign to come in and start setting up or doing whatever the heck it wants. So that's why, uh, that's why I decided on a Double Dance set instead. I thought it was just better getting up my speed, basically equated to having a Choice Scarf, so... Uh, came out to the same thing. Then we have Keldeo, Shoddy, uh, named by, of course, Shoddy. Uh, if you don't know Shoddy, go check him out. We're about at the same sub count, actually. Uh, we have very similar content in terms of League. He's slightly better than me, I would say. He's uh, definitely a better player. Uh, he's top 10, in my opinion, and I enjoy his commentary. Definitely go check him out, guys. But this is our Keldeo. And as you can see, we're running a very interesting set this week. So, I have 290 speed on this thing because that outspeeds max speed Adamant Darmanitan without a Choice Scarf. We have 104 defense with a bold nature. This is to be able to switch into his Darmanitan's Flare Blitzes and be able to take them. I could still take two as long as he wasn't Life Orb. If he was Choice Scarf, I could switch in easily and then just go for a Scald and knock him out on the following turn. Taunt is there because the idea was his Suicune and his Sylveon, if they were defensive, I wanted to be able to Toxic them and then prevent them from healing off their own Tox- uh, their poison, basically. Uh, by utilizing Taunt. Taunt was also very good for Gliscor for preventing it from getting up rocks. Um, it was good for Dragonite from preventing the uh, the Dragon Dance. I could go for Icy Wind to slow it down as well. Uh, it was just good in general to bring Taunt this game. Uh, and I thought a defensive set might be a good idea because Darmanitan pretty much ran through my team. Uh, Icy Wind is there for, like I said, uh, if his Manectric decides to switch in thinking that I can't Oko it, well, it gets hit by an Icy Wind, gets its speed lowered, gets outsped if he's not a Timid Nature, which he shouldn't be against me because there's no reason to be. Uh, and then he gets uh, Scalded on the next turn and probably dies if rocks were up. So, uh, And finally, Toxic, we already mentioned that. So that's our Keldeo set, Shoddy. And finally, we have Scarce, kindly named by our friend Dan or Daneki. And uh, we are running a Choppleberry. This is this was my favorite set this, this game, guys. I brought... <laughs> Do you see this set? It's so weird. We have Gunk Shot, Whirlwind, Ice Beam, and Flamethrower with 252 defense, 152 special defense with a sassy nature, and then 104 special attack. The 104 special attack allowed me to get a 75% or close to a 75% chance to two hit KO, max special defense, max HP, Gliscor. So, and with a boosting nature, of course. So that's why that was there. It was also to prevent his Gliscor or his Dragonite from being able to set up on me. Flamethrower was a lure for his Kartana. I felt like Kartana and Darmanitan were the only two Pokemon that could potentially knock out Snorlax. We already covered that Keldeo was a switch into his Darmanitan, uh, and also Snorlax has Thick Fat. So he can't just freely go for Flare Blitz. He's not going to knock me out with, with a Flare Blitz, ever. Uh, he's going to take a lot of recoil because we have a lot of HP, and I'll be able to hit him with uh, a Gunk Shot on the following turn. Uh, we're in the same turn and knock him out essentially if rocks are up. So that's why that's there. And Whirlwind is once again to prevent setup against me. I don't want Suicune just sitting in Calm Mining against me. I want to be able to Whirlwind it out. Uh, also, if rocks are up and he wants to switch out of his Manectric because it can't do anything to me, uh, something has to take rocks, and then he gets Whirlwinded out into something else to also take rocks. So it's just a perpetual cycle. Uh, like I said, Flamethrower was there specifically for Kartana. Because we have the Chopper Berry, we are able to take. Uh, even an all-out pummeling from full, uh, we were able to take a Sacred Sword from about uh, 50, I believe, uh, and not get knocked out and knock him out with a Flamethrower 100% of the time with this special attack investment. So that was the idea going into this game. If you're still here with me in this team builder portion, um, and you play League format, and you build uh, consistently for week-to-week -week matches, I uh, let me know in the comment section down below if this happens to you. 
sometimes I build a team and I look at it and I test it and I think, wow, this team is really, really good. And then I build another team, not immediately after, but soon after. And I look at it and I say, this team is really gimmicky and it's probably not going to work. And that's exactly how I felt about this team. I was not confident going into this game. For some reason, I was more confident. I was more confident against Eric than I am against Lynx. And that's because I felt like I had a way better matchup against Eric. Uh, but Lynx has a super threatening team against me. And there are certain things that I really didn't expect him to bring because I have certain Pokemon. And I'll ex explain that during the game. Let's actually just get right into it, guys. We'll jump into the game. We will be right back. All right, guys. Here we are, here's the game. We are against Lynx, and this is the team that he brought for us. As you can see, he has Darmanitan, Suicune, Sylveon, which I didn't expect to come, Mega Manectric, Dragonite, and uh, Gliscor. So Ice Beam is gonna put in a little bit of work with Snorlax. Uh, however, Flamethrower on both Snorlax and Absol are essentially useless this game because he didn't bring what I felt like one of the biggest threats to my team, Kartana. If he runs Timid, I'm, I'm revealing like a very uh, key set to league format right now and in, to OU in general as well. If you run Timid Kartana, Timid max attack, 19 IVs in attack, your speed is higher than your attack. That means that you can get up a swords dance and as soon as you get a kill, your speed starts rising ra rather than your attack. And that means that Scarfers can no longer revenge you. Pokemon that are naturally faster than you can no longer revenge you because you're plus two, plus one. It's essentially getting a Dragon Dance uh, on Kartana if you run it that way. And I, for, for some reason, I was fixated on this set and I was so sure that he was going to bring this against Jar, that he was going to bring this against me, and yet he didn't bring it at all. So um, it's kind of surprising, a little bit. So, um, maybe, maybe I should have thought it through a little bit that he probably wouldn't bring that set, uh, because it's a little bit intricate, and it's, uh, Gypsy came up with it, and Gypsy is a god. So, anyway, um, so this matchup, I'm looking at my matchup, and I'm like, okay, um, not liking it so far, not liking the Darmanitan lead, that's going to cripple me if I lead with the wrong thing. Um, let's just try to get up rocks immediately. And uh, I think, I believe I lead with Jirachi here. No, sorry, I lead off with Keldeo. Okay, so I lead off with Keldeo. You see he leads with Manectric. Keldeo pretty much checked four out of six of his members. Everything but Sylveon and Manectric. That's why I decided to lead with it. And I had good switches to both, in theory. Manectric, I have a switch into, and it's my Snorlax. I didn't exactly cover it in the team builder, but that Spadef is there because I can switch into Mega Manectric. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch out. I'm going to go out into my Snorlax. He's going to fire off a Thunderbolt after he Mega Evolves, uh, revealing that he doesn't... Uh, be, he might not have Volt Switch at this point. So he's actually going to switch out, which pretty much guarantees to me that he does not have Volt Switch. And I expected him to switch out right here into his Gliscor specifically. So I went for the Ice Beam. And as you can see, this is a two-hit KO easily on the Gliscor. Now, the problem here is I'm not fast. So this Gliscor is going to be allowed to get up rocks for free, and there's nothing I can do about it. Yachi Flygon might have been a good idea this game uh, with Earth Power, max special attack to take out the Manectric turn one on an HP Ice. That would have been a, a set that I could have brought. Uh, that was the other Pokemon that I didn't bring uh, was Flygon. Um, I didn't feel like it had a good matchup, but looking back at it now, Dragon Dance might have been able to completely destroy him. <laughs> Um, or a special, uh, a special set to take on Manectric as well with Yachi Berry, that was also an option. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna go for an Ice Beam here, but he's gonna get up his Stealth Rocks, and this is gonna be very, very bad for me because I'm gonna be taking Residual on pretty much everything. It's also gonna reveal one of my sets, which is Unaware Clefable. So, now he's gonna go out into his Suicune, and he goes, uh, I'm gonna switch out into my Jirachi because I wanna get up Rocks as well. His team is looking very threatening without Rocks up, so I want to make sure that I have Rocks up on his side. I'm just going to throw them up. And I believe he goes for a Scald right here. As he does, he does not get a burn, luckily. Uh, we're going to stay pretty healthy. And as you can see, Jirachi can take plus one Scald from Suicune. In theory, it should also be able to handle Sylvie on this game. Well, we'll find out in a bit. I'm going to go for a U-turn to get out of here. And I'm going to go out into my dedicated answer to this, Keldeo. 
we're just gonna switch out into Keldeo as he goes for a uh, another Calm Mind. So this is fine. I'm just gonna fire off a Toxic, and unfortunately, I miss right here, as you guys will see. Uh, and my opponent is going to go for a Scald. He's not gonna get a burn on me, not yet anyway. And I'm gonna be able to fire off another Toxic. I was pretty sure the Manectric was gonna come in as an off offensive switch in, but I couldn't bring myself to a clicking Scald in front of a plus two Suicune. I needed to get something Toxic. He had no immunities on his team because he let his Gliscor go down, so this was fine. I was okay with this. And I'm just going to switch back out into my Snorlax. It's still healthy enough to take Thunderbolts, uh, which is exactly what he's going to go for. Even though I have a Thunderous, uh, this is a roll at this point. And I'm willing... I'm not willing to risk the roll. And I know he cannot click anything but Thunderbolt at this point to knock me out. So I'm actually going to pull out a switch into my Thunderous, which is going to get all its health back after he goes for a Thunderbolt. So I'm back up to where I was. And he's going to get his uh, health dropped a little bit more. I'm now going to switch back into my Snorlax on the HP Ice because I'm thick fat. And I know that I can take it. Uh, I can take it very well. It only does 6%. And here he's actually going to predict... Uh, I'm going to go for a Whirlwind here, guys. Because I expected him to either switch out to preserve this thing's health a little bit. Or to attack me with a Thunderbolt, in which case it didn't matter. Uh, he would take a lot of damage. I would be able to reven revenge him with a Sucker Punch from Mega Absol and it would be fine. But instead, he stays in and he clicks Hidden Power Ice, predicting me to go back into Thunderous. Now, there was no reason for me to keep my Snorlax anymore at this point. It was dead to Stealth Rocks. I had no hazard removal on my team, so I do not understand going for Hidden Power Ice unless he had already seen Whirlwind, but he didn't see Whirlwind yet. So, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, well, I just left him with a Manectric at 28% for no reason, and I'm going to Whirlwind him out into Sylveon, and I don't see leftovers. And right away, I know this thing is Specs. There's no chance that this thing is not Specs. Uh, I'm going to let him knock me out, because again, I don't need Snorlax anymore. He's going to go for Hidden Power Fire, knock me out. I know he's probably locked into it, so I'm obviously not going to go into Jirachi. Another reason I wouldn't go into Jirachi is I don't have Iron Head. I can't hit this thing. So at this point, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that he's locked into HP Fire, and I'm going to go out into Clefable, and I'm going to set up a Calm Mind, I believe, on this turn. As I do get that up, and here he's going to take a round of Toxic, and he's actually going to go for a Thunder Wave on this turn. Now, I didn't understand running Thunder Wave. One, I have a Magic Bounce Pokemon. Two, my switch into Manectric is Snorlax, which doesn't care about being slowed down. Three, you're running dual electric coverage, but my switch in technically to your electric attacks is Thunderous or Flygon. HP Ice, Flamethrower, Thunderbolt, and Volt Switch would have done a lot of work to me. Why he was running Thunder Wave over Volt Switch, I don't know. So I decide, okay, well, it's fine. It's all good. Uh, I actually get fully paralyzed on that turn. It doesn't matter. I'm still at 99% and he's gonna go out into his Sylveon. Now, I, I calc it up. I look up Specs damage. I know this thing is Choice Specs. There's no other reason that he would bring in his Sylveon right now. If it's a Calm Mind variant, it loses to Unaware Clefable every single time. So it doesn't, it doesn't even matter uh, unless he crits me. But he's uh, gonna bring in his Sylveon and I know that I can take uh, a Hyper Voice into Hyper Voice if I go for a Calm Mind. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for a Calm Mind here, and I'm going to be able to live his next um, his next Hyper Voice very easily. As long as I don't get fully parried, I should be fine. So I'm going to go for a Moonlight here. I'm going to get back up to 69%, actually 75. He's going to go for uh, another Hyper Voice right here, and I'm going to use another Moonlight. And here, guys, I just want to pause this real quick, because nobody knows this yet. I haven't told anybody this, but... This was the one true misplay that I made this game. It doesn't even matter that I made it, but I did it anyway, so I just want to clarify uh, that you should probably not make this same mistake, because on this following turn, I click Thunder Wave, because I want his Sylveon to potentially not be able to move. My better play was to go for Moonblast, because look at his team, and then look at my Keldeo. My Keldeo beats every single one of his members, because I have Icy Wind, Scald, and Toxic with Taunt. If I get the Sylveon in range of a Scald, 
his team loses. It's game over. But instead, I click Thunder Wave. As you can see, he's gonna go for a Hyper Voice on this turn, and I'm gonna get fully paralyzed. So, that one didn't matter. But had I broken through there, that would have definitely mattered that I went for Thunder Wave over Moonblast. And now it's gonna matter even less because my opponent is going to crit me with his next Hyper Voice. And goodbye, one of my biggest win cons against his team. Now I have to bring in my Jirachi, threaten the fact that I might have Iron Head, and I'm just gonna go for a U-turn on this turn because I don't have Iron Head. I cannot hit his uh, Sylveon. I'm actually gonna go for a Wish, excuse me. Uh, and now I'm gonna switch out into my Keldeo. And uh, I'm gonna just go for the U-turn. I already know that I'm faster than this thing. There's no way it's it speed creeps a Jirachi. And I'm gonna go out into my Keldeo on this turn. He's gonna go for a Calm Mind, that's fine. I have the Toxic. Anything comes in on Toxic, it gets worn down very easily. So that's fine with me. Just gonna go for the Toxic. Uh, this, I haven't revealed Taunt yet, uh, so I want him to think that he can just sit there and Calm Mind and rest, but he can't because I do have Taunt. Uh, and he, as you can see, he's gonna go for another Calm Mind on the following turn. Uh, I probably should have switched out into Jirachi, you turned back into Keldeo, and then gone for a, uh, a Taunt, and then he would have been really low. Uh, here he's gonna get the burn, I believe, on this Scald, uh, which is really gonna suck because Keldeo is gonna get worn down extremely quickly now. And, uh, I'm losing my check to Darmanitan as we speak. And I was so on tilt from the crit onto Clefable that I didn't see the end game anymore. I only saw the Suicune in front of me, and I was no longer paying attention to the threat of a Scarf Darmanitan, a Banded Dragonite, and a Spec Sylveon. And I need Keldeo to handle at least one to two of those, because the rest of my team cannot. As you can see, I don't have Scarf Thunderous this game. My Absol is going to get trumped by E Speed, and I, I just I lost my mind. Uh, after that crit, I started playing badly. He's gonna go for another Scald. We get Whittle down really quickly, and now I might be in range of his Flare Blitz uh, after Rocks. So this is really, really bad. Uh, the Taunt ends. Uh, I ex I didn't expect him to switch out here into his Sylveon, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, I'm gonna go for a Taunt on this turn. Had I attacked, again, I would've gotten more damage on this thing, uh, which would've been nice, but now I have to let my, Kel my Keldeo go down. Uh, actually, I'm gonna switch out into my Jirachi, because my Jirachi can take a Hyper Voice, or so I think. Uh, it takes 35%, so it's a roll, uh, after rocks, uh, after, uh, le leftovers, excuse me, and he's actually gonna stay in this turn, probably knowing at this point that I don't have Iron Head because I haven't shown it yet. So, that was a good play on his part, I guess. Uh, he, I'm gonna go out into Keldeo, I, I just sack it off, at this point I can't do anything about it, I just U-turned, uh, and I'm gonna go out into my, uh, my Absol here. He knows I have Iron Tail, he's gonna actually switch out into his, uh, Suicune, which I saw coming. Uh, but I knew that his Suicune would want to attack me on the following turn. However, had this Iron Tail connected, it would have been really nice because I wouldn't have had to take a uh, an, a Scald from Suicune on the following turn because this Sucker Punch would have killed. Uh, but instead, I have to take a Scald. I'm now sitting at 32%. I'm in E speed range. I can no longer really do anything with this thing. Uh, and I can't really switch out on his Dragonite because if it is banded, uh, it's gonna do a KO Jirachi anyway after rocks. And if it's not banded, I might give him a chance to set up a Dragon Dance, which I really don't want to do. So I'm gonna let my Absol go down. Now I'm gonna go into Jirachi. Uh, it's my last course of action. He's actually gonna switch out into his Darmanitan on this turn uh, as I go for a Wish. Uh, and I, can, I don't have Protect either, so I, it's not like I can Wish anything up. I'm gonna let Jirachi go down. And his Darmanitan does reveal to be Scarfed. Uh, or I don't know actually because I didn't have a choice scarf on my Thunderous and it wasn't faster than max speed Darmanitan But he is gonna outspeed my my Thunderous and he is gonna take us out with a flare blitz So as you can see that crit um, Obviously it mattered because he wasn't killing my Clefable and I was just gonna moonlight up uh, And then I probably would have repeated the same mistake again and gone for Thunder Wave and tried to 1v1 a Sylveon uh, With Calm Mind and risk a crit on every single turn uh, But had I come out of that with a huge boost uh, I would have forced him into Darmanitan, given him rocks damage, and I would have switched out into Keldeo on that turn. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have kept my Clefable in because my Clefable still beats his Suicune and his Dragonite after rocks. So, if that crit didn't happen, I was looking like I was going to win this game. After that crit happened, I did everything in my power basically to, uh, to make myself lose. So, that's what happens sometimes when things uh, don't go according to plan, and even more so when you bring gimmicky teams like this, guys. I didn't have Iron Head on Jirachi for... Uh, anyway. Um, don't want to talk about it anymore, because this was... Uh, I was really upset. Um, 
after the match. Uh, I didn't want to uh, talk to anybody, but uh, Jar was very supportive. Thank you again, buddy. I uh, really appreciate all your help with uh, all the prep, everything uh, that you've done for me this uh, uh, this tournament. Speaking of Jar, guys, our last game is going to be against Jar. At the time I'm recording this, I haven't played him yet. But basically, Lynx over here is 2-1. and one. Eric is 1-2. and two. And uh, Jar and I are 1-1. One and one. Meaning that whoever wins between me and Jar moves on to the next round. And whoever loses does not make it on to the next round, to brackets, uh, and stays behind in the bottom 16. So that's uh, kind of scary, especially with Jar's team. You guys are going to see it in the next team builder, but I'm really not looking forward to this game. Uh, I am because he's my friend, but I'm not because of his team. It's very scary. And some of the things that I'm thinking of doing, I've reconsidered at this point because I've watched his other games. Uh, but anyway, we'll get to that when we get to that, and you guys are going to see that. But uh, that's been it for this one, guys. If you did enjoy me uh, getting upset about a crit, <laughs> make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys tomorrow. Ciao.